Get up world, coming to your timeline, The Unusual Suspects, a Christian's perspective on sports. Now let's meet the team. Yo, this is Mike Third Degree Burns. And the reason they call me Third Degree is because I destroy and demolish all competition and debate. Yo, this is Dave Willis, also known as D. Will, because I am that guy. Um, when it comes to sports knowledge, there's nobody can touch me. I played the game, I studied the game, I know the game. Hey, this is Yolanda Yo-Yo Parker. The Yo-Yo means I go up and I go down. It just depends on how you bring it. Um, I'm the mom of three sons, been in sports for a long time. You can bring it, but you'll see a whole different beast. <laughs> oh yeah, baby. It's your boy Vic Kansas. They call me Vic Kansas because I rep Kansas sports the biggest. Jayhawks, Chiefs, Royals, Sporting KC. What's up? Nobody wants to debate me when it comes to this. Because usually, I win. <laughs> what's up y'all welcome to the unusual suspect sports show i'm your host mike third degree burns and you know i always got the crew with me got my girl yo what's up yo hey what's up peeps how y'all doing good good to see you yo i got my man big kansas what's up big kansas hello everybody <laughs> <laughs> all right we got the food guy we got my man d will what up d will what's up what's up what's up and last but not least, we got Dre Day, who make easy payday, my boy, the pastor. What's up, Dre? What up, what up? What's good? Good. Good to see all y'all. Uh, we got a great show lined up for y'all today. Uh, first thing we're going to talk about today is the NBA bubble. We're going to get everybody's thoughts on how uh, how's it's looking to them and uh, how they think it'll go. Also give some predictions on who they think is going to win, if it's changed, uh, of if it's changed at all since we last talked about it. So we're going to uh, go out to uh, Dre Day. Let us know your thoughts, bro. First of all, I'm super excited that the NBA is back. You know, we be, we're able to watch something that is live and in person. Like, you know, we've been kind of been nostalgic over the last couple of months, you know, with the NBA and all the sports on pause. And, you know, it kind of gave you time to reflect on, you know, some of the greats from the past and, you know, the last dance and all of that. And now we're back in the moment. So I'm happy about that. I'm happy to see, you know, these great athletes get back out on the court. Um, I'm happy to see if LeBron can, you know, pull off uh, a ring, maybe. I don't know, yes. uh, but we'll see. <laughs> but, no, I'm excited to see it. And, uh, you know, so far the game's been looking good. I was kind of uh, worried, you know, because maybe, you know, with that long pause, you might have some uh, issues in terms of, like, you know, conditioning and, you know, not, not have your legs. Uh, I saw one play today where C.J. McCollum actually got hung on a dunk. <laughs> <laughs> he had his legs. So, you know, that's I guess that, that's expected. But overall, I'm just happy. Happy the NBA is back. All right, D-Bro, Big Kansas. Oh, I'm super excited. You know, um, I think sports, one, brings us all together and gives us something to talk about. But before I jump into my opinion, I want to make an apology. Uh, so a couple of shows ago, I made a comment about uh, Dennis, uh not Dennis, but Scotty Pippen, and referred yeah. to him as um, a Catwoman. Uh, it was no, <laughs> it was no disrespect to um his game. It was more of a shot to his character and the actions that he did in the uh, in the in the series. Um, for for my basketball heads out there that I felt disrespected. I apologize. Yeah, you so, had them goons after you, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now that that's over with, um, I'm super excited. You know, I'm still rocking with the Lake Show. Um, I feel like LeBron got something to prove. Um, the Clippers will be scary, uh, especially with Kawhi and Paul George. And you know, Kawhi got something to prove. He wants to prove that he can he can be the I mean can be the man and constantly do it. Um, but LeBron is in year 17, and he's trying to you know prove that prove the haters and the doubters wrong that, you know, he's still the best in the game. And he, he can still win championships. So um, I'm looking forward to seeing what um, LeBron and even these young kids like John ja Morant and Zion and see if these guys can even get into the playoffs and see what they can do in this short period of time. 
That's what's up. All right, uh, Yolanda, how do you feel about the bubble, NBA being back? Um, For somebody who doesn't usually watch it until the playoffs, I'm excited because we haven't been seeing many live sports. So I'm happy for them to be able to get out and do their thing. Um, I'm, um, I'm not really concerned because I think they grown men. They know I just need the rest – the folks to stop going outside of the bubble. <laughs> you got money, let them come to you. So anyway, <laughs> I'm happy for them, and I'm going to edge to the Clippers. Oh, what? Oh, no. All right. It's a little edge. He clap. He did the baby clap right there. <laughs> I can leave. I can leave. <laughs> <laughs> right. D will man I am geeked excitement ain't even the word man like I remember when I got home yesterday I was like oh my goodness I can actually watch highlights of NBA it's basketball so like, it's been so long. <laughs> um, but like I'm, I'm super excited ready for it to happen uh, the games have been actually surprisingly good uh, kind of to piggyback what Dre said when you have such a long layoff and you know you don't really don't know when you're coming back and then how people are going to take it seriously, whether they, you know, stay in shape or whether they just kind of let it go. Um, it's good to see, like, some people out there showing out. I definitely want to shout out Bo Bo. He has some connections to the Kansas City area, and he was out there hooping. Yes. Like, hooping. Uh, he's killing. The Clippers looks scary good, uh, even without Pat Bev. And I was like, oh, that's, that's dangerous. Um, <laughs> But then the Lakers look good today, so I, I'm excited. Uh, I'm always gonna rock with LeBron. That's gonna always be my first choice until he get eliminated. I'm picking LeBron. The and bad thing to do, brother. <laughs> 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 I'm sticking with it. I'm holding strong. I was talking about. I'm, I'm not. I'm not wavering at all. I'm sticking with my man's. Him and the great beard and the. You know, standing up top, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> this pandemic had him stop coloring his beard. <laughs> yeah, I know. You notice the videos of the beard and the hairline stopped when the pandemic. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's time to start keeping it real. Until it's hey. Man. I, ask DJ Khaled. <laughs> oh. oh, man. Man, he like a totally different person during this My period. Goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Ben J, ben J or whatever, that stuff be working, boy. <laughs> or Beijing, that's what it is. Beijing, Beijing. Yeah. yeah. Beijing, black ice. <laughs> All right. So, also, I was going to ask y'all, uh, who do y'all think is uh, – who should be uh, the MVP of the league? Anybody can, can go. Oh, I'm going to say Giannis. I'm going to say Giannis. Giannis. The reason why I say Giannis is because – he's been the best player consistently throughout the year. I know that, uh, you know, LeBron had a, a late push, you know, kind of like February, late March. Yeah, late, late very late push. <laughs> late registration, <laughs> LeBron. <laughs> <laughs> and then, I not believe that one low. <laughs> what, what gets on my nerves is you get these, these media personalities that are on clutch pl payroll, like they're on the, uh, the clutch payroll. So they keep pumping LeBron as if he's been – killing the whole season when that's not the case. And I feel like Giannis has done more with less. You know what I mean? He don't have a Anthony Davis on his squad. You know what I mean? To lighten the load. He's got Chris Middleton. Okay. He also Keep that in the East. He's playing in the East. Oh, okay. He's playing in the East. Like, what they got to do with the NBA? <laughs> let's look at it. When they was considering the teams to bring to the bubble, they literally had to change the rules so we can get enough East teams in there because it's so bad. <laughs> Whatever, who's, the number, who's the number one seed in the West? <laughs> who's leading the league in assists? Uh, who's top, what, 10, 15 in scoring? Man, Come Giannis on, man. averaged 13, 15, and 6. 13, 15, and 6? I mean, 30, 15, and 6. I was about to say 13. <laughs> you want that to be your MVP? <laughs> 30, 15, and 6. He's the MVP, I mean, man. It's, it's crazy to me how the energy levels change when it comes to LeBron. You know, exactly. the first, first he couldn't, you know, he was like, well, he's in the East, and it's, it's, it's easy to dominate in the East because they're in the East. But then, oh, what happens? He goes out West. 
And what happens when the regular season is? Oh, they're the one seed. He missed. Oh, yeah, he missed the playoffs. Oh, his first year in the West, right? He, he missed oh, okay. twenty-seven games last year. But when he before he got hurt, what seed were they in? Okay, exactly. See, we exactly. like the like five. We like the three. We like the three. We like the three. 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 We like <laughs> to flip the narrative a little bit when it comes to certain players. Okay, LeBron's the MVP, bro. LeBron is always the MVP every single year. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> So, so, I mean, my case for LeBron, though, is Steph wasn't leading the league in the scoring, wasn't averaging 15 and 5 or whatever when he got his MVP, but that just go away because it's Steph. Oh, it's the poster child. Oh. <laughs> you can't mess with the Currys. <laughs> uh, uh, yo, who did you think would win? Uh, who you think should win MVP? Well, I'm just going to pick, you know, me. I'm. I'm just gonna go with the one that was leading before. I mean, Giannis. So Giannis. not good yeah. to follow, yo. It's not good to follow. They always tell us to be leaders and make up our own mind. <laughs> 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 right. Ain't nothing happened that made you want to change. <laughs> Maybe you had this big old layoff. So, <laughs> mm. <laughs> well, you got to be a follower before you can be a leader, but. I'm still, I still have my true. own mind. Very true. <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right. So uh, everybody's still sticking with their same team that they thought was going to uh, win the title? Oh, yeah. Yep. Okay. So, uh, yo, who did you have winning? Clippers? Yeah. Okay. And Big I Kansas, who did you have winning? I had the Lakers. <laughs> did you have the Mavs? Yeah, I think Dre had the Mavs with Luca. <laughs> Luca and the unicorn. <laughs> my favorite team. <laughs> and Dre, you had the Clippers. Is it? it? And uh, D. Will, you had the Lakers. Joe, Lake Show, all the way. All right, for sure. All right. So that was good, uh, great discussion about the NBA bubble. So we're gonna move uh, move on to the uh, NFL, and we're gonna talk <laughs> about the hometown boy, Hello. that guy Patrick Mahomes. Mahomes, uh, <laughs> yes, my homeboy. He uh, just recently signed a ten-year, uh, five hundred and three million dollar contract, and uh, he's locked up. And also, the Chiefs just recently signed. Uh, Chris Jones, defensive tackle, to mm-hmm. a uh, long-term deal as well. So I want to go to our resident uh, Chiefs, um, Chiefs fan, our our our, our guy D. Bro, Big Kansas. <laughs> I want to get his thoughts on the uh, recent signings of the Chiefs, and uh, you know what their prospects are looking like for the upcoming season. I was actually waiting for the the post of Brett Veach to come out with the with the dynasty and uh, the rock lock the building. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he oh, said the same thing. That's all I'm gonna say. They they ended the Super Bowl with 177 dollars in cap space, and they signed a, their two biggest stars on the offensive side and the defensive side. And you know, for the, for the longest, the Chiefs can never hold on to a top. You know, uh, they, we will let our big stars go because. They just didn't want to sign them, but Brett Beach is working wonders in KC right now, bringing, keeping the, the talent here. You know what I mean? Yep. People say all the time, well, I, you know, the, the, Chiefs, the Chiefs are going to be sorry because they won't have cap space to keep these guys. Well, they've been drafting good. So now you got, got these guys on rookie contracts. You know, Pat Mahomes popped on the rookie contract. Chris Jones popped on the rookie contract. Uh, McCall Harmon looks like he's going to pop on the rookie contract. Tariq Hill popped on the rookie contract. Travis Kelsey popped. All these guys popped on rookie contracts, so they're going to get the deal. So, and then when you're that good and you can make money work, you're just going to figure it out. So shout out to Brett Beach and the Kansas City Chiefs for making it work. All right. Hey, D. Will, what's your thoughts on the, on the uh, recent signings? Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean – Congratulations to Mahomes for getting that back. Even though, like, you know, some of the podcasts I listen to, they say some of the money is not, like, the value that they're saying is not the real deal. Uh, but right. that's neither here nor there. But, 
you know, he did a good job. What I don't, what the no, I guess I would say I don't like. What's annoying is though, Chris Jones got his bag, but in the midst of the story, they had to throw in Mahomes helped him out. Like, who cares? Like, oh. you know, just let, let this man get his shot. Like, I mean, for the Chiefs to be because of what I would consider a small market team. Oh, yeah. uh, Brett Veach is definitely doing his his thing with keeping the talent. Because, um, like, I mean, Darian alluded to earlier. The history of the Chiefs is you get these big names, but then right when it's time to pay day, they leave. Same mm-hmm. thing. Royals, same thing. Same thing with every KC organization. So <laughs> for him to be able to keep them here, um, lock them in, that's, that's good for that's them. Good for that. But I am getting annoyed hearing about all this Chiefs stuff. <laughs> in your dynasty, you actually have to win more th- multiple times. Right. Let us, and it, I mean, let us LeBron think. And them, LeBron and them got on stage and said, "Not six, not seven, not eight, not nine. it was two. Like, actually, <laughs> <laughs> one for sure. The other one, they got super lucky. So, uh, <laughs> right. I guess I'm gonna wait and see and see what they do, man. You muted, Mike. You muted, Mike. You muted, Mike. My bad. Uh, yo, what's your thoughts on that uh, uh, matter? Oh, I'm actually happy because they're starting to do things that they hadn't done before. Um, and um, I can win. <laughs> win, win and, keep, and keep the big names. Because you, you can win, yeah. but still don't go too far. Because, you know, when uh, Alex Smith was here, we was winning. We just wasn't going too far. So, um, yeah. I think um, he has a really good crew of finance folks working those contracts. Because um, I think they the way they did it, I'm thinking he, they can just go and, you know, what's the, what is it, Kelsey Nim? I think they got a couple more years or so. But if they wanted to keep him, he stay healthy and everything, and you know they can keep the other and the receivers and stuff. I'm I'm excited about it actually. We just gonna see how it's gonna turn out, and I don't see nothing wrong with them talking about the beginning of a dynasty. Now that's the key word, the beginning. <laughs> they haven't one. got there I, yet. I, but I mean, it, the Mavs uh, dynasty. The Mavs won one championship. They not a dynasty. Like let's keep it in mind. <laughs> So, well, that's just the second one in 50 years, but okay. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm happy for them that they were able to get the deals done. So we just look forward to see what's going on. I'm hoping we have a season, but we'll see. <laughs> Dre Day? No comment. That is now I'm happy uh, Kansas City finally made a move. Oh man, it must be something in his area. We're having some technical difficulties with Dre right I now. I want to pick it back up. Oh, there he is. Okay. Oh. Oh, we're well, sorry, you guys. We just lost Dre. Uh, but we're going to keep the conversation going here. So, uh, Darion, do you think uh, that the uh, that there's any type of uh, uh, competitors that can uh, actually dethrone the Chiefs this year? Oh, yeah, of course. I mean, Deshaun Jackson's still in the league. I mean, not Deshaun Jackson, but um, Deshaun Watson, the Baltimore Ravens, dude, them, them boys are stacked. They actually might be the best team in the NFL if you just look pound for pound, roster by roster. They might have the best roster in football, you know. Mm-hmm. So and then they got the the league MVP. I mean, I don't think nobody. I think people are putting to the play like the Chiefs fans are talking and they're saying like, "Hey, this could be a dynasty." I don't know, but I don't think people are saying they are a dynasty. I, they do have the potential because they have the best quarterback in the league, you know. So they do have the potential to be a dynasty, you know, if they can keep it going. But yeah, it's some heavy hitters right now. I mean. Even if they make it to the Super Bowl, you still got cats like Aaron Rodgers, Breeze, um, you know, and Tom Brady over in the NFC still trying to make moves, you know? D-Will, your thoughts? I mean, I agree with what Darion said. Like, 
if you look at every roster top to bottom, like it's not that big of a difference between a lot of the teams that are out there. Um, I mean, the Bucks, like, let's just be real. Like, they got some weapons out there. Uh, the Saints reloaded, you know, with some weapons. You got the Ravens. You got the Seahawks. The Seahawks are even talking about um, signing, a, what's his name, Antonio Brown, or even bringing Josh Gordon back. Like, those teams are stacked. And, um, you know, it, it could be very dangerous to just look past a lot of people just because you won last year. You know, you got to be careful because, you know, once teams figure you out and figure out what to do and how to play against you, that that, that makes you very limited in what you got, what you can do. So, um, I, I think, I mean, as they were saying, it's the beginning of a dynasty, yeah, because you lock up the best quarterback, but at the same time, there's no cakewalks in this league. And then, you know, um, any injury, one injury to a major player can definitely change the, the fate of the whole team. So, Definitely agree with that. Um, as as you, I think both of you guys mentioned uh, Tom Brady, and well, I think Dave mentioned uh, the uh, the Bucks. And uh, how do you think that uh, Tom Brady is going to fare with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? Um, go ahead, Dave. Uh, I man, I think with Bruce Arena, uh, what's his name? Bruce. Uh, Bruce Arians. Arians. I was about to say Arenas. That's a soccer guy. Yeah, Bruce Arians. Offense. I mean, those quick hits, he's dangerous. Like, now, if you make him hold on to the ball, then you have a better chance of beating him. But, I mean, you got Mike Evans, Goodwin. Like, you got um, two tight ends that are just Howard and uh, Gronk that are just crazy big. Like, that could be very dangerous. And they get their run game locked up. Like, it's a it's an interesting combination for where he chose uh, to go. So, yeah, my um, the O line was poor last year, uh, but they did draft uh, Tristan Wirfs from out of Iowa, who's one of who's one of my top prospects coming off the board. I think the I think they'll be okay, like they said, if that quick game is working. But Bruce is really not known for the quick game. You know, he's a long ball Fair guy. Enough, yeah. Go back and look at Andrew Love; they were throwing it all the way down the field, but. If you can get that time for Brady, you'll be all right because you got Mike Evans and, <laughs> and and Godwin over there, you know, running fly routes. And then you got your security blanket that you've always been used to having and, and Gronk and, you know, even O.J. Howard, that's something new. So um, he definitely got the weapons. You know, this is the year for, you know, all the Brady fans to say, they know, he's the GOAT. You know, this is – and he still got it. You know, this is the, the year because he has more weapons that he's probably ever had in his career. I mean, you think about it, dear. Like he got every level covered. Like if you look at downfield, like mm -hmm. I mean, you got the short routes, you got the mid routes, and you got the post. Like yeah, that's dangerous, man. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, the Bucks they're gonna be nice, man. I, I just, I just think that Brady, like last year though, he seemed like I know he was falling off to me. I don't know if that was him because you know he had always made you know the team better because like those they never had like great receivers except when they have Randy Moss but like for him uh, for the Patriots like it seemed like he he was was just going down uh the, this last year or whatever so I want to I'm anxious to see if it is really uh if it was really Tom Brady just falling off or it was just the talent around him wasn't as good as it was in past years man you better give uh make some changes to that TB12 method because yeah you're right. <laughs> he was looking a little rusty last year so <laughs> TV 12. Yeah, and I hate that they tried to blame it on the O-line. It was just like the O-line wasn't good when pro football focus had them ranked in the top 10. It was just he couldn't move. He can't – I mean, I mean, and to <laughs> piggyback off what you're saying, you bring in Cam to replace him, like, that, that's going to that's gonna really show, you know, who was at fault there. So, I think uh, – well, I said, you know, it's looking good in terms of, you know, his weapons, though. But if he can't perform to the level he was performing at a couple of years ago when they went to, won that Super Bowl, then it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be real interesting for sure. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, let me get what you, what, you, what are your thoughts on uh, Cam Newton joining the Patriots? You got there. I think it's awesome. Um, one, it gives them a a chance to one refocus, new location, the greatest head coach of all time to get them focused. I you know watching his videos. It just seems like he's really tapped in. It just seems like that he's really, really dialed in to just be a better quarterback. You got a guy like uh, 
Josh McDaniel and you got Bill Belichick, I feel like you have no choice but to be better. You know, so I think Cam is going to do an awesome job in New England. I'm wishing him the best. I'm actually kind of nervous because when the when the Patriots go, it's, it's scary for the league. Yes. I mean, I'm, I agree with Darion, man. Like, I think it's a shame that it took this long for him to get signed to a team. And then I think it's a shame in terms of what he had to sign for. When if you look at his contract compared to some of the other quarterbacks and then you look at the production and what they've done, like, I definitely understand the, in, the injury history, but like, this is a performer MVP, man. Like, I think it's a little bit more stuff behind the scenes in terms of why he wasn't signed. But uh, – <laughs> put him with Josh, like like you said, put him with Josh McDaniels and a winning organization that's used to winning, that has a tradition, that has a you know a locker room presence like that. Like the sky's the limit, you know. If he falls in line and does his thing, uh, the Patriots will be another dangerous team in the AFC. So you mute, you muted Mike. I think he was hit throwing it over to you, Jay. Okay, what are y'all talking about, Cam? Yeah, Cam. Man, so I, I'm excited to see Cam in uh, New England. Uh, I saw his uh, arrival in uh, Boston today. I think it was today. It might have been yesterday. Uh, but it looked uh, like he was all business. You know, uh, you know, the media always tries to try to get you to say something to get you off kilter, try to get a response out of him. But I feel like he's in a place mentally where he's like, you know, I can say what I need to say on my own platform. But when I'm, you know, here with the team, I'm focused. I'm going to do my thing with the team. And uh, that's all I'm about. And I feel like the Patriots, to me, they're going to be the real deal. That I mean, that, I mean, they already have the system in place. Like, they already got the coaches. And they really don't necessarily win with big names or big talent anyway. You know what I'm saying? Like, they just have players who play hard. They know they roll. They do what they're supposed to do. And, you know, they're selfless. And I feel like I feel like Cam is selfless to an extent because, you know, the way that he played in New England, I mean, not New England, but uh, in Carolina, to me, he was selfless because he laid his body on the line for so long. Like, I'm talking yeah. about you're the leading rusher and you're the quarterback. You know what I mean? Like, it's crazy. they ask you to do everything. And yeah. so I'm happy that he gets to be in a system where there's an actual offensive line that's going to protect him. Uh, he had no protection in Carolina. Exactly. <laughs> so uh, I'm excited, man. I feel like the Patriots, you know, low key. I think they are. They, they got to be at least like top three, top four in the AFC. You know what I mean? Obviously, the Chiefs are number one, but New England, you can't sleep on them, man. They out here playing chess while everybody else is playing checkers, bro. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Uh, and uh, Dre, you had, we had lost Dre there for a moment, so I did want to get his thoughts on uh, the Patrick Mahomes and Chris Jones signings for the Chiefs before we move to the next subject. Yeah, first of all, uh, our fans, I'm sorry. Like, it's just, I don't know what's going on with this session for me today, but I'm back. Hopefully I'm staying connected. But as far as what, you know, Patrick Mahomes, I'm happy that he got his bread. And uh, one thing that kind of irks me with the media is, you know, so Chris Jones got his money, but they make it seem like Patrick Mahomes did everything he could could to, you know, make sure Chris Jones got, like, dude, like, first of all, if I'm Patrick Mahomes, I'm not giving the team a discount. Like, y'all want me, y'all paying me. You know, if you want my services, you're going to pay for them. Now, I, I understand football is a team game, and, you know, you got to make sure that you got, you know, the team around you to have success. But uh, it's – you know, you still got to look out for yours. That's that's exactly. just how I look at it. Because it's a business. Like they not. I mean, if you just think about it in a different in different terms. So like, I love what LeBron did in the NBA. Like he took the power away from the GMs and the owners and you know the coaches because they felt like, oh well, we we can trade you now. Now mm -hmm. it's like you know it's all about player empowerment. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So. I'm happy Pat Mahomes got his money. I, if I was him, I probably would have asked, you know, for half of the franchise. <laughs> <laughs> and then with, and with Chris Jones, you know what I mean, I'm happy he got his bread. I'm just happy the Chiefs are actually paying their players and making sure that they keep their uh, cornerstones, their foundation, so that, you know, they can compete for years to come. They still got to, you know, pay other players eventually, but I'm happy with what uh, Veach is doing. He's doing way more than uh, – what was the last guy's name that went to Cleveland? I can't think of his name. John Dorsey. Uh, Dorsey. Dorsey. Yeah, Dorsey. Yeah. 
yeah, Dorsey thought he was making moves, but you know, V just was making some real moves. So see, I think out. I think with Dorsey though, Dorsey had the splash, like the highlights. He did. He but did, he yeah. never retained anything. Like, so, yeah, like, Veach is, Veach is doing a, a good job. They need to make sure yeah. they keep him. Both of them better than Scott Pioli. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we don't want to talk about that. <laughs> Fire Pioli over the over <laughs> arrowhead on the plane. <laughs> right. Started with Pioli. <laughs> oh, that was a sad time. Oh, man. <laughs> Wait, what was the coach's name? I can't even think of his name now. Ty Haley. Uh, Ty Haley. Ty Haley. Oh, he was your OC for a while before he got, he got your best. Yeah. yeah, he was. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. All right. All right. Well, that was a great discussion on the uh, NFL topics, y'all. Uh, we're going to swing to uh, to baseball. Nice segue there, Mike. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> but, um, uh, we're going to talk about Mookie Betts. He just recently signed one of the biggest contracts in Major League Baseball. I I'm, I'm, I was hurt by this when he got traded because other than a Royals fan, I'm a Boston Red Sox fan. So I'm sad right. that they traded him away and traded him to the Dodgers of all places. You said he was a Red um, Sox fan. He just got a big fat deal, 12 years, <laughs> $365 million. And Dre is a, a L.A. Dodger fan, so I'm going to throw it to him first. No. Oh, no, no. That's – no, no. I'm a Yankees fan. No, no. You're a Yankee fan. <laughs> We're going we to go to the man who got the Dodger, Dodger right. gear on. <laughs> it looks like he playing today, boy. They can. <laughs> oh, oh, so, when the trade happened, I got really, really excited. So, I'm a huge Clayton Kershaw fan. I actually got first on – uh, I, don't, I think he's one of my favorite players, one of my favorite players all time. And I want him to win a championship. For some reason, like, you can have a great career in baseball, but something finishes your career when you don't win a championship. And it, it kind of like, people consider Griffey one of the greatest of all time, but it's like, oh, well, he never got a ship. You know what I mean? It's just kind of, it, it's crazy because when, when you look at baseball, Griffey is probably the greatest player of all time. So Mookie getting this deal is super, super good for baseball just because, one, like Mookie is a smaller guy. You know, so Mookie, if you look at Mookie best, he's not a big guy, but the kid is fundamentally sound. He probably has one of the best bats in baseball. He's super young, and he's playing in prime time. You know, like he's playing out in L.A. So, like, people knew who Mookie best was. Like, be, just because he was winning MVPs and stuff like that. But now he's about to be on, like, it's L.A. Nothing nothing beats L.A., you know. So, Mookie's about to be out there, young brother making that bread. You know, he's out there with Cody Bellinger in the same outfield. Two MVPs in the same outfield. Like, the they, the Dodgers can be very, very dangerous for the next, you know, you know ne- next 10 years. I mean, that kid, he's in his mid. He's in his early 20s, you know. So, shout out to Mookie Best for getting the bag. Um, yeah. It ain't that Mike Trout money, but it'll do. <laughs> Nobody got that Mike Trout money, bro. right? <laughs> the most boring superstar in baseball, Mike Trout. <laughs> yeah, y'all got any thoughts on that, Dre or uh, D. Will? Uh, yeah, I mean, it looked like the the Dodgers are the modern day Yankees, like they was back in the day, just spending all kinds of money. Um. But I definitely want to give Mookie a shout out. Like, what I like about Mookie um, is just his character. There was a story out there a couple of years ago when the Red Sox won the World Series. I guess it was like they had a big old party with his family. And um, he didn't put this story out, which is what I like even more, is the, they had some extra food with this gathering he had with his family. And he actually went out with his pops to give the food to the homeless in Boston. Like, to me, that speaks to somebody like his character. Um, and then yeah. you hear like he was trying to pay the salaries of a lot of the Dodgers um, employees during the pandemic. Like, I think just, you know, for somebody like that, and he's not the showiest person, um, you know, to see somebody get a, they, they just do, I think it's pretty cool. Um, but kind of like what Darion was saying, who's all of a sudden became a baseball expert and the Dodgers expert with all that. <laughs> Dodgers are like he's about to DH today. Um, but, Hey, I think it's, I mean, I'm it's dangerous, man. You said what? <laughs> Got you. 
I mean, the Dodgers look dangerous, man, to tell you the truth. Like, if they can get it together, get over that uh, playoff slump that they've had, minus the cheating and everything, I think it'd be, it'd be, they'd be a nice team to watch. Dre, you got any thoughts on it? Uh, yeah, I was going to say, uh, you know, uh, I'm happy he got his money. And, yeah, I would say that they are kind of like, you know, what the Yankees were, minus the chips. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're not getting no <laughs> – <laughs> ain't getting no rings. And the Dodgers, they've been playing with people for like the last, man, like seven years. They've been right there, and then they just don't close the deal. So, I mean, I'm happy Mo Mookie got his money. I, I just don't see them getting over the hump. I got to see it to believe it. That's all. Oh, I do want to shout out formerly Mike Stanton, now Juan Carlos Stanton. He hit the first home run of the season. Shout out to our producer for giving me that information, too. But, uh, yeah, shout out Juan Carlos Stanton. Support. <laughs> All right. Well, man, it just feels good to have live sports, bro. I'm telling you, just yes, to <laughs> just to even see baseball. Like, and I like I'm not as big as baseball baseball fan as I used to be, but just to see baseball on the TV, bro, yeah. it's beautiful. Yeah, they man, just, they just announced that they're extending the playoffs to 16 teams for MLB this year. Oh wow! They should have been did that. Every second place team in the division is going to make the playoffs, and it's mm. a wild card. Nice. So, so it's going to be it's, it's going to be awesome. So a team like the Royals making you know may sneak in. You know Not I'm gonna get ahead of ourselves. Like let's, let's <laughs> pump the brakes. Let's pump the brakes. Let's pump the brakes. But I know real talk. Like I think it's going to be like I'm. Well, I'm glad to see it back. I think it's going to be interesting to watch the games without fans. Like. Part of going like I'm like Mike said, I'm not the biggest baseball fan, but just going to a baseball game was pretty fun. Like mm -hmm. ooh, like all the extra stuff around it. So to not see that and see the, like the cardboard cutouts they put in some of the arenas or the stadiums, <laughs> it's, it's, it's gonna be interesting for sure. I wonder yeah, what, Go ahead, Mike. No, I was gonna say, yeah, well, go ahead, Darian. Go ahead. I wonder if they if they'll get to a point where they start gradually letting people in, you know what I mean? Maybe just a couple hundred fans or something, you know? Like, it'll be interesting to see if they got to that point. But I noticed something that, that's been absolutely dope with no fans is, boy, when that ball pop off that bat, oh, yeah. it yeah. seemed like the whole stadium was on fire. Because yeah. uh, <laughs> Bryce Harper hit a home run in the exhibition game off of Max Erzitz, and, bro, it sounded like the stadium blew up. He hit, the, he hit it off the bat so hard. So that's been really dope to see. Hopefully Bryce has a good year. Exactly. <laughs> hey, he, he got he got that bag and started chilling, boy. He was like, I'm real. <laughs> my my contract fully guaranteed. Y'all gotta pay me regardless. Man. Yeah, I because I, I was watching the game last night and uh I saw the cardboard cutouts of the people behind the plate and I was like, What? <laughs> I, was, so I, was, I, was, I thought I was tripping at first, but I was like, Oh, they got cardboard people by behind the plate. <laughs> In the stands or whatever. That's crazy. One team is like, hey, pictures of their kids and put them in the hood, like every player. Right. Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Just leave the seats blank. Like, it don't matter. Yeah, I mean, at this point, like. <laughs> right. That's funny. All right. All right. Well, uh, we got two more topics here. And uh, the last one will be a little a little more lighthearted. But we're going to talk about um, Elena Deladon. Uh, she's WNBA, uh, reigning MVP in the WNBA, as well as uh, champion as well, Washington uh, Mystics. Yep. Uh, recently, uh, I want to read this here, so I'm going to make sure I get it right. Uh, looks like on Monday, a panel of doctors denied Deladon's request to opt out of the WNBA season for medical reasons, saying she's not at a high risk of contracting COVID-19 and should be allowed to play. But her own doctors uh, said in a statement that uh, she is indeed at high risk. And I uh, also saw here she takes 64 pills a day. So I uh, just wanted to get you guys' uh, thoughts on uh, the NBA or WNBA saying that she is uh, – okay to play and her uh, personal physician saying that uh, she isn't and any, think, anybody can play. I think that's the frustrating thing about uh, first of all the whole medical field is like 
one side can say one thing and then a whole another side can say another thing. And I feel like those that are closest to her, I think they have her best interest at heart um, in terms of her medical staff. And I feel like the WNBA is looking out, out for their bottom dollar because they know she's, you know, a huge star. And so, you know, it's frustrating. Like, to me, it's like, okay, they could easily w, – the WNBA could easily say, you know, well, we, we, gonna, we can take an L on this one just because of the circumstances. But I feel like they're letting, you know, money talk. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, it's frustrating. Like, for somebody that's dealing with Lyme disease, you know, we don't know all, the, all that she got to deal with. Obviously, Mike said that, you know, she's taking 64 pills a day. Man, I, can, I mean, 64 pills, like, that is a lot. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, I, to me, if I'm the WNBA, I would do all I can to protect, you know, one of my, you know, investments. And if that means she has to sit out just the rest of the season until things, you know, kind of seemingly get back to normal, then you got to let her do that. You know, her health is number one. Yeah. I agree, man. Um, I mean, if you, if you think about it, like, if you're up eight hours in a day, that means you're taking eight pills every hour. Like, that is crazy. And... I think they're sending mixed messages. Like they don't want to verbally say it's about the bottom line, but you definitely know just being a corporation that they want to make the money. But then you're right. the health and safety of our players. Like literally her own personal physician said it's not safe for her to go. Like it's not like they have a lot of stars saying they don't want to play. Like from my, if, from my recollection, I think most of them, if not all of them are actually there in the bubble playing. So yeah. like, you can't not care about the people within the organization. Like that just to me, that's a tone deafness of the top leadership of the WNBA. And I think it's a, you know, hopefully they can rectify that because, you know, she should get her salary. You know, she's not yeah. just trying to avoid it. She's literally looking out for her own health. And right. her story is a very interesting story, especially with her sister and what she does. So you don't want to put her in danger by putting her in that thing. So um, I think it's a shame. Hopefully they fix it for sure. Yeah, I find it I find it a little disrespectful to her and like questioning her character almost, you know, as if she could can't do it. It kind of reminds me of that Kawhi situation, you know, when Kawhi's doctors are saying, like, hey, you probably shouldn't play, but San Antonio's just like, nah, bro, you're good. You know what I mean? Like, you're good. But he's like, No, nah, I'm telling you something's wrong with my body. You know what I mean? And they're like, No, nah, no, nah, you're okay. You know, then this whole storm comes about with like, well, he don't want to play, he's sitting out and blah, 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 blah you know, the, the health of a, a young woman like Elena is important to her. It, it ain't about your bottom dollar. It's not about what you're trying to accomplish here. You know what I mean? Because let's just say, hypothetically speaking, she comes, she plays, she gets COVID, and it doesn't end well for her. You see what I'm saying? Then you're, I mean, just look, think about the bigger picture. Think about what's yeah. actually going on here. You know what I mean? Like, you guys are not going to play a full season anyway. You know what I mean? So, like, most most people are looking at this as a wash anyway, you know, like just let it, you know, let sleeping dogs lay, you know, and just just go about it. Let her rest, you know what I mean? Let her take her 80 pills a day. I, struggle, I had a sinus infection. <laughs> the know. way you said that. Though. Yeah, that was weird. What? You said let her take her 80 pills a day. Like, <laughs> no, I was just, no. I was like, no, I'm saying like, I struggle. <laughs> I struggled with taking oh, two pills infection. You know what I mean? That so was, I couldn't imagine taking 80 pills a day. I'm just right. saying superstar rest. Let her get her let her get back into full health. That way next season she can come back and dominate again, be league MVP and win y'all another championship. I agree. All right. Well, those are all great uh opinions and then statements about what uh, Elena Deladon is going through and uh, I do uh, I do understand uh, from what I've read is that the Washington Mystics, uh, they are going to uh, pay her salary uh, regardless as, if she plays or not. But uh, mm -hmm. uh, I just thought that that was a good uh, a good topic to discuss, uh, especially, you know, with uh, uh, COVID-19 going on uh, in the uh, country and all across the world today. Um, so uh, transitioning to uh, a lighter note. <laughs> my man Mike Tyson is in the news again and uh, he's going to be fighting a former light heavyweight well, actually a former heavyweight champion yep. uh, and in Roy Jones Jr. in a exhibition match they're going to be going eight rounds so I want to get you guys uh, <laughs> predictions 
on who do you think is going to win this fight? Mike Tyson, one of the he had one of the greatest flashes in boxing and heavyweight boxing history. And then we have Roy Jones, who who was one of the most consistent boxers, uh, and he won at different weight levels and um, went from, I believe, from like middleweight all the way up to heavyweight and won titles. So just wanted to get you guys' opinion and predictions on who do you think will win this charity fight. This is open to everybody. So. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Y'all must have forgot. Roy Jones. Y'all must have forgot. Y'all yeah. must have forgot. <laughs> that. Uh, man, I'm just going to say, I'm, <laughs> I'm just going to say, I think it's going to be a draw. I don't think they're going to I don't think they're going to make it the full, what is it, two-round exhibition? Like, eight like, rounds. Eight rounds? Okay. I don't know if they're going to make it the full eight rounds. Uh, it might be a good one or two quality rounds in there. Uh, now, I definitely, I'll watch it just because I'm a boxing fan. I love to see boxing, but... Yeah, man. Iron Mike is no more iron no more. I mean, <laughs> workouts look good. You can look good in the workout, for sure. Yeah, exactly. But I don't know if he's still Iron Mike anymore. And uh, I did forget about Roy Jones Jr., so uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm saying a draw. I'm going to say a draw. Man, okay. I'm going to say, I'm gonna say uh, first of all, I just think, I'm just thinking about how I saw them at the end of their career. They both <laughs> were just terrible. <laughs> like, he was like, when is this going to end? <laughs> So <laughs> it's hard for me to predict because it's like, you know, you know these boxers, man. I know it's just in their blood. They just like, you know, I got to, I got to do it again. I just, I just don't want to see nobody get hurt, man. But uh, I'll probably go with, uh, I'm gonna go with Tyson in three. <laughs> <laughs> believe this is a um, this is a cry for help for Roy. <laughs> I, I watch all those videos and, and Tyson Tyson still he got like a little iron love. He might not got a lot, but he got a little speed left. Now, hey, now he's a steamer. He ain't no iron. That boy is steamer, but you know, <laughs> right. he that bag pretty hard. So I would just say he knocks off Roy's head <laughs> in the second. Just <laughs> sounds good. I, I think the best fight of the night is going to be the Nate Robinson. Uh, oh, the undercard. <laughs> who, who, who's Nate Robinson fighting? So Nate Robinson, the YouTube boxer, um, I think his name is Ryan Paul or Paul mm -hmm. or whatever. They're, they just agreed to be the undercard for that fight. I think that's actually going to be the most entertaining one. Man, uh, Nate Robinson trying to find anything he could do, boy. Lord. Hey man, he, he was out there fighting in the big three. Now he's trying to get on the right. – come on, man. Come on. Man. <laughs> oh, man. I can't wait to see it, man. I'm picking, I'm picking Mike Tyson. I'm thinking Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson in six. Man, I'll be impressed if they make it five rounds. Like if both if this fight goes longer than five rounds, I will be thoroughly impressed. I got a question, because you're a boxing guy. So because it's an exhibition, are they wearing headgear? No. Mm -mm. No, you don't have to. I think it's No, nah, they don't do headgear. I thought it was fighters' mm -hmm. choice. Like if both yeah. of them agree to do it, then they, yeah. they will. I highly doubt they're gonna be wearing headgear. They're not wearing no headgear, nah. man. Mike and Mike and one. <laughs> Mike gonna have a quick burst and tire out. We're gonna be out there dancing, boy. You remember Man. Roy? <laughs> Man, Roy was funny, boy. He used to drop his hand, let people try to hit. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. <laughs> oh man. Man. All right. Well, that's our show for today. Uh we want to thank you again for tuning in to the unusual suspect sports show. I also wanted to give a shout out to Yo. She had to leave early. She had to make a run. So shout out to Yo. She had to leave uh, during the middle of the show. Uh, we're glad we got Dre back in. Man, because uh, he was having some technical difficult difficulties, but we're glad we got him back in so he could definitely bless us with his presence. Uh, anybody else got anything to say before we get out of here? Um, Go Clippers! Go Clippers! Lake Show, Lake Show. Oh, listen, show. I think Clippers, man. Clippers, man. And then I think Boston coming out the East. Nah. Man. Oh, sorry. Boston got to figure it out, Bucks. man. Bucks or Sixers coming out the East. Man, Sixers ain't going nowhere. <laughs> Bucks ain't got Malcolm, right? Malcolm still got COVID, right? 
Oh yeah, you're right. He don't play for the Bucks. He plays for, play for, play for the Pacers now. Yeah, yeah. He for the Pacers. Yeah. And yeah. Oladipo was playing. I didn't even know he was playing. Yeah, Oladipo out there. He's trying to get that mm -hmm. money. He was. He said he wasn't even paid. That boy said, "I'm getting my contract." Y'all not taking my money from me. I seen, a funny, I seen a funny post online. It was like uh, Kyrie somewhere punching the air right now because he thought he could play basketball, be social at the same time. With Dude. These cats, these cats, these cats. He don't know who he want to be, man. He want to be Kobe, then he want to be Malcolm X. Then he, wanna, he don't know what he want to do. And he on that Kanye path, if you ask me. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, I got Kanye. one more. Uh, shout out to... Uh, Jordan Brand, you know, Michael Jordan won in the end because the Detroit Pistons <laughs> yes. have Jordan Brand symbols <laughs> on their jerseys. <laughs> hey, d town so mad. Them jerseys are not in Detroit at all. Right. <laughs> Man, and in the end, I think he took it personal. <laughs> oh, he did. He made, that's probably the first other, besides the Hornets, he probably said, it got to be on the Pistons. Yeah, right. Yeah. Man. Man. <laughs> Check out the Dodgers opening day. They play the Giants. Okay. What? All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, man. It was good to be back with y'all again. Likewise. All right. Well, again, thanks for tuning in. This is the Unusual Suspect Sports Show. Hope to see y'all soon. Peace. Peace.